Hey everyone, I'm going to be working on a project for the next couple of days and I thought I'd share it with you. The topic of the project is going to be soldering and specifically solder fume extraction. In itself, it's not really a problem, it's more of a personal problem that I have with fume extraction, which is that I don't do it enough. Part of the reason for that is that I'm just very lazy. Another reason is just that uh, when I'm soldering something, usually I it is a means to an end in a project. You know, I need to solder these wires together or solder this wire to a component, and then I wanna move on. And adding any extra tasks on top of that, like setting up the fume extractor, plugging it in, you know, arranging the power cord so that I can get the thing on my workspace. Uh, not really something that I wanna do in the middle of a project, and so I just tend not to do it. And so I got to thinking, you know, I'm not really gonna get less lazy about that, so maybe I can improve this tool to make it more likely that I'll use the fume extractor, which is something that I should be doing anyway. And that sounded like a really fun project to me, so that's what I'm gonna work on. The primary foundation of this project is gonna be this, which is just a cordless tool battery. And the reason that I'm choosing this is because I think it's going to eliminate like 80% of the excuses that I would normally come up with not to use the fume extractor. And I also already happen to have a retired PC fan around, so I'll use this for the actual extraction. But if you've seen my past videos, you know that I really like constraints. And uh, another constraint that I think would be fun in this project is there's this maker named Felix Schellhaus. Uh, I don't really know how to pronounce his last name, so sorry to all uh, the Germans out there, but he is a maker that I find really inspirational. He uses a lot of found objects and comes up with these really ingenious solutions that are uh, usually multi-purpose and clever, um, and the end product is always just so fascinating to me. And Whenever I'm in like a rut, like a creative rut, and I don't really feel like making, I always watch his videos and it, it makes me want to just go out and, and make more things. So I thought with this project, maybe what I could do is take some inspiration from him and try to use some materials that I don't normally use and put them together to make something that is Felix-esque. I think I'm gonna use uh, something like this, just a half inch sheet of plywood to do the connecting between these two things. Um, and I even have some other cool things like, this handle that I found at a architectural salvage place um, and I think with these components together it's gonna have uh, the feel that I'm looking for like the Felix feel but the main thing about this approach that I'm thinking about is I wrote this when I first started sketching on it and started thinking about this project is the easier it is to use the more you'll use it I, I want to always be thinking about every decision that I make is this making the fume extractor easier to use and if so I need to go that direction and if not um, it's not really worthwhile for me to consider. So uh, I'm gonna have that top of mind. This is my rough idea of what it's gonna look like in this sketch. Um, I'm really happy with this, but um, it's very rough, so I have a long way to go. The first challenge that I think I need to think about is the challenge of connecting this plane of plywood to uh, the, the battery and how the battery is going to connect to the system, how I can remove it, and just what the relationship is gonna be between these two parts. Uh, that's what I'm gonna work on first. So let's get to it. In my latest DIY some build log, I was reminded of the importance of doing a proof of concept test before getting all caught up in the details. So before I get into any design work, let's do a little electronics test with the battery and the fan. It's a 12 volt battery and a 12 volt fan. And together, what I think I should get is the fan running at max speed. Next up, let's see what we can reuse from within this flashlight. What I'm hoping to find here is just a couple of electrical contacts that align with the battery terminals. Also, I'm hoping to remove the internals, like the flashlight part of this, and reuse the enclosure to secure my battery to my fume extractor. The internals of this flashlight are surprisingly simple. Uh, it just has this little LED and a control board which is mounted to those contacts that we were after. I'll save the LED and the board and hopefully use them on some future project, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the contacts from the control board so I can use them in this project. Sometimes what I do at this point in a project is I'll just kind of put my critical components on my desk next to me in different arrangements. And really what I'm trying to do is just fill in the gaps between these two separate components. And so that's what I did in this project. I just kind of had these two things on my desk like this. I kind of had this little internal revelation where I thought, well, I'm looking at these things and for some reason in this arrangement, this seems better to me than the sketch that I've been working off of that I've had in my head up until now. Because with this tool in my situation, Compactness has a direct relationship with usability because as I'm working, my desk is covered in stuff. 
Uh, it's just a total mess. And if I have to clear out space on my desk for a fume extractor that has a large footprint, I'm much less likely to use a fume extractor just because there's an extra step involved. With a compact fume extractor, I don't need to clear out a space. The only footprint requirement is this battery and the compactness that that creates. That is a more useful product than the one that I have sketched. And as hard as it is to take that work and kind of throw it away, I can't ignore the fact that a more compact solution is better. And, and I think I can come up with some ways to connect these two components using a piece of plywood like this that is slightly different from my original sketch, slightly more compact, but still using my original material. But I'm not after more compact, I'm after most compact. So here's a dumb idea. What if instead of a design that's more like a panel, what if I do something that's more like a tower? So it has a footprint the size of a battery and from there it just extends up and houses the fume extraction assembly in there. And instead of using one big fan, I can use two narrow fans that match the profile of the battery and they just stack on top of each other. You might be thinking like, well, why can't you use the plywood to do that? Um, and it's because I have an additional dumb idea that I think I kind of have to do now, which is in addition to extending this to make it uh, kind of like a tower shape, I think by switching the material from, from plywood to 3D pr printed plastic, what I can also do is make that tower look like a Makita tool. So not only is it going to kind of extend the form of the battery upwards and become a fume extractor, it's also going to extend the design language of this battery and look like a tool that you could buy off the shelf from Makita, uh, which is really stupid and uh, pointless and doesn't really serve a purpose except that I think it's kind of fun and it would be kind of cool to, to pull off and it's a constraint so I have to um, go for it. It doesn't really add any usability but I think the footprint idea, the idea of compactness does add a serious amount of usability, like a non-trivial amount of usability. I think I'm going to recreate this in Fusion 360 so that I can add the kind of uh, fan enclosure on top of that. I said in the beginning of this that I was going to follow the usability oriented solutions and making this thing as compact as possible is going to make it more likely that I'm going to use it. And couple that with the fact that now I'm really excited to make it look like a Makita power tool. Yeah, I just have to abandon this. Maybe in a future project I'll come back and do like a Felix style project. Uh, for now, yeah, I think we're going the Makita route. So let's start by recreating this little battery connector. And at first glance, I think this part can come off as a little bit intimidating and complex. There are a lot of little details that don't really make sense unless you look at them individually and figure out what they're for. So to recreate this, I'm just gonna go through piece by piece, detail by detail, and use my calipers. And rather than try to understand all of it all at once, just take it one bit at a time. And eventually over time you add complexity and before you know it, it looks a lot like the original. After doing a couple of iterations, I feel like I have a pretty solid solution. And and I'm ready for the fun part of adding the fan enclosure on top. To start, I want to get an idea of how tall this thing should be, and to understand that, I want to kind of see where I'm generally working when I'm soldering. So I just got my helping hands and set them up here, and I'm really fortunate that I had the camera running at this point because as I was trying to find the ideal height for the fans, I was sitting here kind of miming the process of soldering and seeing where the fan should be, and I was using the little articulating arms on my helping hands uh, and trying to adjust the height. And you can probably see here in the clip that I had a little epiphany, and this is me realizing that uh, I I can make the fume extractor articulate like the helping hands. Uh, the, one of the things with the fume extractor is that if the fan isn't close enough to your work, the fumes don't get sucked into it and it becomes kind of useless. A better version of the tool would allow you to reposition the fan and pull it closer to your work. And to achieve that freedom of movement, I think what I can do is scavenge some of this lock line that I use to make flexible video lights. And all I need to do is find a way to connect the battery base to the fan using this lock line, and I'll have an articulating fume extractor. I think it makes sense to revert back to a single fan at this point, but the 120 millimeter fan is a little big and at max power, it's actually a little loud and uh, it's a bit overkill. I'm gonna swap it out for this one, which is a 92 millimeter fan that runs at a more reasonable 1.2 watts compared to the original's 3.6 watts. So I think this is a perfect fit. I think I can actually go back and use the case for the original flashlight now. I just need to find a way to secure the lock line on top of it. And conveniently, there's also this power button that's positioned exactly where I want to put the lock line. So maybe I can fashion some sort of adapter that is sandwiched in the interior of the enclosure, but then extends out through the power button hole and somehow clamps the lock line in place. 
and trying out a couple of solutions, I'm pretty certain that this is the wrong approach. First, the power button hold is acting as a bottleneck where the stress from the lock line is concentrated and then it eventually breaks. Second, I'm going about the lock line connection all wrong. What I'm trying to do is surround the base of the lock line and then clamp it in place from the outside. I think what I should do instead is recreate the profile of the lock line and then integrate that directly into the base. And then what I can do is just snap the lock line right onto it. All right, so that means one more flip-flop back to the uh, custom battery connector that I made earlier. And what I've effectively done is just modeled in a solid piece of lock line that can accept other pieces of lock line onto it. And so with this assembled, it will just go right on top of the battery like this. One of the nice things about this design, I think, is that the lock line is just a natural point where you want to just grab this thing and move it around. Um, in addition to like the battery base too. So there's just a lot of chunky, nice, satisfying places to grip onto this thing. Uh, it just feels really good. And now I need to do a transition that's similar to what I just did on the base to the, to the lock line and go from the lock line to the fan. And the fan's gonna sit on top like this. And if, if I don't consider the transition carefully, I think it's gonna be kind of abrupt because you're going to go from this sort of narrow lock line and then immediately go into this wide fan. And the fan shroud itself, the thing that houses the fan and the filter is gonna be even wider. So I have to think of a way to gradually transition from the lock line up to the fan. Um, I don't think it's gonna be as easy as it sounds. I don't really have a great idea right now of how that's actually gonna look. Um, it's gonna be something that I chew on, I think, for a little bit, uh, and then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. So after a lot of thinking and a little bit of prototyping on this part, I started to move in the direction of adding a little grip piece as a way to both create a smooth visual transition from the lock line to the fan shroud and double up as a functional piece that I can grab and then reposition or angle the fan. And I really thought that this was going to be my final solution for this part, but ultimately I'm really not liking the look and feel of this piece. It's a little too small to make for a comfortable grip and the look and feel is a little bit too industrial for something that you're supposed to grab onto with your hand. Not very ergonomic. After trying a handful of alternatives, I think I found an alternative that I really like, but I wanna show it to you once I get everything assembled. I just need a fan shroud that houses the fan and also the carbon filter that goes in front of it. For me, this was a design by subtraction process, and I started with this really basic rectangular prism that was just slightly larger than my fan dimensions, and I just whittled it down until it housed my components. And of course, I added a bunch of random angles and facets that one, make it look a little bit more streamlined and also just make it look kind of like a power tool. This is really coming together now and I just need a couple of final touches. First, a little button to toggle the power. And of course, this build wouldn't be complete without some Makita colored filament. So I'm gonna finish up some CAD work, get these parts in the printer, and then finally I can put it all together.
right, so this is it. This is my cordless fume extractor. Uh, I really love the idea of just pulling this off the shelf like a normal power tool, slamming a battery in, putting it on my desk, and then repositioning this to the exact place where I need it. I'm also really satisfied that I was able to incorporate some found components like I originally wanted to. So this original battery, that's still in there. I added this aluminum handle, which I think looks cool, but also is really functional. I find myself using it quite a bit. And of course, the lock line in the middle is something that I salvaged from another tool. One thing that I'm thinking about doing is I thought that this 92 millimeter fan from Noctua was going to be perfect, but I think I optimized a little bit too much for power efficiency and low noise. This thing's silent uh, and it's powerful enough, but I think I could probably like double or triple the power and be a little bit happier with the usability of this thing. So I think I'm going to look for a fan that's the same 92 millimeter form factor, but a little, quite a bit more powerful. This was an interesting project. It took some twists and turns. It doesn't look anything like my original sketch, save for maybe like the battery on the bottom and the handle on top. But that just kind of happens sometimes on my projects. You know, sometimes the end result looks exactly like the original sketch, and sometimes it goes in this direction and it looks totally different. It's not always the case that I'm able to go down those rabbit holes on a project, so I'm really glad I was able to on this project, and I'm really glad it turned out the way it did. I really like this thing. All right, that's just about it for this one. I'm gonna go play with this some more, so I will see you in the next one. See ya.